In December 2004, Bonnie Frost's car carrying three of her four kids hit a patch of black ice and then it hit a tree. Her son Graham and her daughter Gemma spent months in the hospital. Because the Frosts earned less than $55,000 a year, the federal S-CHIP program helped with their bills. Graham and Gemma got the care they needed. Last month, Graham asked President Bush to expand S-CHIP to other low-income and middle-class kids. The right wing responded by calling for Graham to die. In our third story tonight, his parents have decided to give their first TV interview, and you will meet them in a minute. First, the remarks that drew right-wing fury directed at a 12-year-old boy with a partially paralyzed vocal cord. My parents work really hard and always make sure my sister and I have everything we need. But the hospital bills were huge. We got the help we needed because we had health insurance for us through the CHIP program. But there are millions of kids out there who don't have CHIP and they wouldn't get the care that my sister and I did if they got hurt. Our parents might have to sell their cars or their houses or they might not be able to pay for hospital bills at all. What other kids is Graham talking about? S-CHIP currently covers 6 million children, too poor for insurance, but not poor enough for Medicaid. But a growing number of Americans, 2 out of 5, are not covered by employer insurance. 47 million don't have any health insurance. That number is also up. The number of ins uninsured children increasing by 600,000 last year alone. So Democrats want to expand S-CHIP to cover 4 million more kids. The cost $7 billion a year. Enough Republicans agree that the Senate approved the expansion with a veto-proof majority. The House vote was about 20 short of veto-proof, so the President vetoed it. The House will try again on Thursday. In the meantime, the right has targeted Graham and his family, Rush Limbaugh and others, spreading extraordinary, easily disproved lies that have been posted online anonymously about them, portraying them as rich and dishonest parasites. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's office reportedly collecting those lies and disseminating them to the media. And a Bush staffer named Nicholas D. Thompson of the Office of Strategic Initiatives choosing a blog called Red State to post a defense of the president two days after the Baltimore Sun had revealed on its front page that another poster at the same blog had called for the public hanging of Graham and his family. On that sad and extraordinarily disturbing note, let's turn to Bonnie and Halsey Frost. Great, thanks for coming forward and joining us tonight. Thank, Thank you. you, Keith. Mrs. Frost, let me start with what matters. How are you and the kids doing through all this? We're doing well. Um, Gemma and Graham are doing well. They're in school, but they have a lot of healing left. They have a lot of work to go, so we're hanging in there. Mr. Frost, let me uh, ask you, just deconstruct this fictional picture of your family that's been put together by the, by the fringe, the lunatic fringe. You're, mm -hmm. uh, you're a business owner. You work out of a commercial property you own. You live on a street full of half-million-dollar homes. You pay 20000 a year for your kids to go to private school. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it would seem to me it would be common sense if you do all the math on that that uh, we'd be doing really, really well, and that's um, far from the case. Um, you know, that, that's uh, quite a rosy picture they've painted, but, um, you know, the fact is uh, I did have a, a business, uh, of course, they did not report properly that uh, I ran from, like, Frostworks from ni 1990 and folded up around 98, 99. Um, Went as far as uh, incorporating that, uh, actually carrying health insurance, and actually that was probably one of the nails in the coffin of that business. Uh, it was became cost too much to bear for that. Um, yeah, and a half million dollar homes. This is a house that we bought as a just yeah you know, near about shell and uh, did all the work ourselves. So uh, I would hope that we're not punished for the sweat equity into that. But um, I have that ability and the need, unique skills to, to be able to do everything that's required to uh, turn this property around and um, this is our home this is this is not an investment thing this is this is the frost house and the kids are in, in private schools on scholarships mostly yes it's like uh, yeah that we, we do get help from that from the schools um, it's a must without that we really uh, would be limited, have our options rather limited. Mm. Mrs. Frost, your address posted online, these lies <laughs> accepted by, uh, by, by uh, as facts, uh, yes. death threats. Did you know beforehand that people like this existed in America? Yeah, I knew people like this existed in America, but I am shocked that it came to this, that they seem to use this as a distraction technique to take away the issue at hand, and that is that millions of children in America are without health insurance and could benefit greatly from the S-CHIP bill. 
just like my family has. And my main goal was to get that message across that we just want to help other families like we have been helped. And just thinking that it was turned around in such a nasty, negative way is unbelievable to me. Yeah, definitely an, an agenda that they seem to need to be filling because I guess when you have to attack in such a manner, uh, you're <laughs> obviously it's a distraction because uh, the facts are very clear. This helps Amer hard-working American families. This country needs this now. And uh, I am sorely disappointed in our president for not having his finger on the pulse of what's going on right now. Let me ask you, Mr. Frost, uh, one more question before we, we, we look at some, some uh, disturbing pictures in a different sense. But uh, d does Graham know about what's happened since he gave the Democratic radio response? And if so, what's his reaction? Yes, he, he, he does. I mean, we keep the, the kids o aware, and we are an open family about things. But at the same right, that we don't sit there and read these ridiculous blogs that go on and on with faceless characters who, who can't sign their own name to what they're saying, which I think is just absolutely pathetic. And, and all these other uh, shows and whatnot, you know, they're going to just go on and make a case out of whatever they need to just to, to bolster their, their story and their take on this. Um, yeah, the kids are so unaware. And, you know, honestly, what I really appreciate is their being kids and they're being as normal as they can and going to school every day. We were just working on homework before we came here, working with uh, Gemma and her math book. Uh, actually, I was cooking dinner. It, um, you know, the basic normal daily routine. And, and, and a normal that you had to fight to, to, to achieve again. And Mrs. Frost, I want to put up some of these pictures that might be a little tough and we warn the sure. audience for people to look at. But earlier today we'd asked you if you had any photos that might illustrate what you and your kids went through. I'd like to show these now and ask you to just sort of walk through for us what would have happened to them without this S-CHIP program. Absolutely. Well, I have no doubt that they would have received care in the emergency room. But after their month in intensive care in their comas, they needed intensive rehabilitation, um, four and a half months worth. And, and so that people understand what, I mean, we could just say rehabilitation, but we're saying, like, this is like having babies again, mm -hmm. learning Gemma, how to Gemma had to learn how to talk and walk mm -hmm. and do everything again. She couldn't get herself dressed. She couldn't read. She couldn't write. She couldn't, she didn't know how to go up the stairs. You had to teach her how to go up the stairs. Graham could not eat. He couldn't walk, he couldn't sit up, he couldn't hold his head up, he couldn't swallow. So it took months and months, and they are still working hard to get better and still getting special services and still going to physical therapy. And there's no way that we could have afforded to send them through all those multiple therapies to recover and to continue to heal. And I am positive that Graham would not be walking, would not be eating, I don't know where Gemma would be right now. Yeah, and, you know? and, and Graham was able to go on the radio and, and get involved in our political process. And Absolutely. instead of people standing up and cheering, even the ones who say, no, he's wrong, but thank goodness he was able to do it. You get this. It's just, it's phenomenal. Um, and it, go ahead. I was just going to say, the thing is that even if you do not agree with the story, you don't attack the family. And you really need to get back to the issue at hand, which is the health insurance bill. Palsy and Bonnie Frost, again, uh, since the Rush Limbaugh's of this world aren't going to be mad enough, <laughs> enough to apologize to you, and Graham will do so on, on their behalf. We're sorry the media has gotten this bad. Um, great thanks for, for coming on with us tonight. Thank Absolutely. You thank much. you, Keith, and thank you it. for being a responsible reporter on this and in delivering the story in, such, in the manner that you do. Thank you, sir. Go back and cook dinner. <laughs>